Example 8 is going to be quite similar to example 7, but we do have at least one difference at the beginning here that we need to take care of. We're given data on the disposable income for different countries uh, for different years. But then what we're told is to look at constructing our model or complete this problem. Uh, let's see, in part A, where X is the number of years after 2000. So our column for year is going to make up our X variables. Our column for income is going to make up our Y variables. But to adjust this to be number of years after 2000, we're going to shift each of these values. So 2010 would be 10 years after 2000. And then 15 years after... 20, and so on. So we're going to make this adjustment to our data as we enter it into our data table. I've entered this data into Desmos, and I'm reset back at the initial viewing, windows de uh, viewing window Desmos starts you off with. So we need to look at adjusting that view, which I'm going to do just by scrolling in this case, until I see those data points that I want. Again, we can also use that wrench icon to set our minimum and maximum values. We have our data, and then in part A, we want to find that linear model that's the best fit for this data. Again, we'll type in y1 tilde m times x1 plus b, and Desmos will give us that value for m and for b, as well as that correlation coefficient. And if we want, again, we can change the color of our different uh, visualizations here to match up. So what we end up with for this data is the linear equation y equals 0 0.290 times x plus 7.298 with a correlation coefficient of r equals 0 0.9954. Where again, that correlation coefficient corresponds to the fact that this line is a very good fit for the data. The points are very, falling very close to it. And we're seeing that increasing pattern. In part B, we're asked to interpret the slope. So in this case, as our x value increases by 1, so let's uh, change that a little bit. Let's say every year. Our y variable is going to change by 0 0.290. So the disposable income increases since we have a positive slope by 0 0.290 billion dollars, or we could rewrite that as 290 million dollars. So again, the slope tells us, uh, as our x value increases by 1, how much our y value changes. In terms of domain, we could say in this case, negative infinity to infinity would be appropriate, because 0 could be included, since that corresponds to the year 2000. And if we're including negative values, something like negative 10, really just means 10 years before 2000 or 1990. So both positive and values would make sense to include here. In part D, we're asked what does the model predict the total disposable income will be in 2033? So we could evaluate our model for x equals 33 which would be 33 years after the year 2000, plus 7.298, would give us approximately $16.868 billion. So this x-coordinate is a value that wasn't in our original table, but using our model, we can make that prediction. And then we're asked in what year would the total disposable income reach 22 billion. So we can also plug in a value for y and use that 
to determine the value for x that would correspond to it. So plugging in y equals 22 and solving for x would give us x is equal to 50.7 or approximately 51. So that would mean in approximately in the year Uh, 2051, we would expect to see that disposable income reach $22 billion.